Now let, let, let me help us to understand it. If the Lord of Sabbath had not left unto us a little seed, we would be likened unto Sodom and Gomorrah. But I, that's why I thank God for the truth. Thank God for the seed of the word of God. And that letting us know that God was mindful of us. He was mindful of us. So I'm going to leave you the word. He didn't leave us anything else. He left us the word. Because the only thing that's going to transform and to change men and women's lives. Nothing but the word of God. We bless you for your word. He didn't say blessed are they that hunger and thirst after material things. But he said blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. And then all this other stuff will be added. But you got to do it like the Bible said. Look at your neighbor and say you got to do it like the Bible said. There are no shortcuts to the blessings of God. You got all these shamsters and shysters on television, on the World Wide Web, shamming and scamming the people. All of these devils that stand up talking about you send me $2,000, God will bless you. Since I'm a child of God, why don't you send me $2,000 and let him bless you? Then you won't have to be telling me to send you two thousand. Come on, talk back to me. But I, I, I'm I'm just excited for the truth. I'm just praising God for the truth. We, we, we're not talking about games and all of this other foolishness that has inundated the church. People have become distracted from the things that pertain unto God. And they go on like Israel, a whoring after other gods. They're whoring after the world. In other words, they don't want to be faithful to God. But the Bible tells us that no man can serve two masters. Either he's going to love one, hate the other, cleave to one, and despise the other. But you cannot serve God and the world. You know, people saying that you, you don't know what's in my heart. The works of what's in your heart, the products of what's in your heart manifest itself on the outside. Folks looking at playboys and saying that they love the Lord. You a freak, you a pervert. Don't care if you don't ever like it. You got snuff dippers, you got tobacco chews, cigarette suckers, cigar suckers. People walking around with their tooth brown as wood and saying that they love God and defiling the temple of God. All of these drunkards. And I got news for you that no Christians running around there talking about this, this non-alcoholic beverage. You going to hell. You a drunkard in heart. You got a mind to drink wine. That means you not you are not delivered yet. And I want you to know something. The Bible says drunkards going to hell. Wine is a marker and strong drink is raging, and whosoever deceived thereby is not wise. See when you get wise, let it alone. When you get wise, you abstain from it. You don't do it anymore. Oh, glory to God. Now, what I look like going over into the alcoholic beverage section, I'm, I'm, I'm getting 
non-alcoholic wine. That, that's the reason it's over there because it's alcoholic. It has alcohol in it. That's why it's over there in that section. It's not over there in the soda pot. It's not on the juice aisle. It's over there where it should be. And where a Christian should not be. Oh, bless him. But we praise God for the truth. You can be seated. Listen. When I look at Deuteronomy 8 and 3. When I look at Matthew 4 and 4. And Luke 4 and 4. That man should not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Shall a man live. So now God is expecting us to, to live by his word. And you know, just in case we didn't quite understand where the word came from. Just in case we quite, didn't quite understand what the word was. You know, God didn't really explain it. In the Old Testament. But it gave us an explanation in St. John 1. <clears throat> beginning in verse 1, it said, In the beginning was the Word. <clears throat> the Word was with God. <clears throat> Maybe you didn't know it, but the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. The same truth was in the beginning. See, God didn't have to alter anything. He had everything planned just like he so desired. So I, I know if I give them this word, as he did in Exodus 20 and in, in Deuteronomy 5, he, he gave us a word that we couldn't keep. All the law could tell you to do is thou shalt not commit adultery. It couldn't keep you from committing adultery. It's just like that sign out there. It can say stop, but it don't make you stop. <laughs> it be in your best interest to stop. But if you don't, you have to pay the pipe. So now we come to a word. That was in the very beginning. Now watch this. This word was. Where was, was God, was with God. It was God. It was a begin, in the beginning with God. And all things were made by him. And without him was anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness. And darkness comprehended it not. Verse 9. That was the true light. Which lighted every man that cometh into the world. Verse 11 said he came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many. Has received him. To them gave he power. To become sons of God. No, 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 no. Not because you, you join up with some church. Not because you shook somebody's hand. That made you all right with God. Come on, talk back to me. But no, no, no. This word does something to us. When you get it just like, it, like it's supposed to be, you know, not mixed up, not watered down, not added to, not taken away from, but I want the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. Bless him up and heal somebody. Listen, I just want this word just like it is. 
just, I just want this word just like it is. I don't want, I don't want nothing watered down. I don't want anything changed, you know, uh, you know, been tampered with. I want it just like it is. Now, now, now watch this here. Let me, let me help you understand why I said so. Years ago, we had a doctor, an oncologist that was treating people with watered down medicine. So when they found out that he was treating cancer patients with that was not going to help them. The reason it wasn't going to help them because it was watered down. Come on, talk to me. And so they found it, indicted him, convicted him, sentenced him to prison. Now watch this. They the watered down judgment. You got preachers that have watered down the word of God. They tell the sinners it's okay to sin and you can still go to heaven. Beware of false prophets. You better beware. You be, better be on the lookout because if they're telling you they're selling you a bill of goods that's no good. If they're telling you that you can get to heaven with a little sin in your life. Now, you, you got to understand something. That was another angelic being that resided in heaven. You know, he was Lucifer, the bright and shiny one. Oh, but when sin was found in his heart. Oh, how thou art fallen. God kicked him out. He had him kicked out. Now, now I said that to say this. If he kicked out one sinner, the father of sinners, you think he's going to let the children in? Because you are your father, the devil. According to St. John 8, 44, he told the, those Jews that said they, that they were Abraham, see. But they, they didn't like truth. Just like the so-called professing Christians of today, the they don't like truth. This is why you're going behind all of these old funny Bibles. These Bibles that have been added to, these Bibles that have been taken, the word of God been taken away from. I don't want no New King James Version. Because it's corrupt. I want to ask you, devil, something. What was wrong with the old one? See, when God came up with a new plan, it was because the first was faulty. He said if it, the first had been faultless, there would have been no need for a second one. So now, why would you change the truth and go to something new? Because you, you're trying to pacify the sinning. You ain't, you ain't no sin, such thing no sin in Chris. The last time I looked at it, it, it Christian mean to be Christ-like. And the last thing that they, they told me about Jesus is that he did no sin. Neither was there any guile found in his mouth. So when you come up with a sin in Christian, he that committed sin is of the devil. Ain't no, ain't no way in there and say, you, you, you are sinning, Christian. Say, you are the, your father, the devil. And the lust of your father, you would do. Because he was a murderer in the beginning. And abode not in the truth. He, was a, he told lies then, he's lying now. Come on, talk to me. And I, I just want to rattle your cage just a little bit. You, you better stop running out the rep wonderful. And you better look at the reality of Bishop wonderful, apostle wonderful, all of these two bit hypocrites. But you better have a mind and a desire. My God, the hunger and thirst after righteousness. And God will bless you. Not trying to walk on the edge and see how close I, I, I can get to the edge without falling off. That means you got a mind to sin. What, what, what's drawing you to get close to the edge? Because in order to get to the edge, you got to move a little bit farther away from Christ. And then I didn't, I didn't never read where he said, get a little bit, move over a little bit. I, all I heard said, draw nigh unto me. 
and I'll draw nigh unto thee. Because see, you finding yourself separating yourself from God. But we better have a mind and a desire. I'm preaching up in here tonight. You better seek after God with your whole heart. You know, time out for making excuses. Can, can I just tell Because all of us got the same amount of time. All of us got the same amount of time. 60 seconds in one minute. 60 minutes in an hour. 24 hours in a day. 365 days a year. All of us got the same time. You don't have a 90-second minute. All of us got 60 seconds. And so now, we can't complain to God. Say, God, I just don't have enough time. Now, you're going to tell with your little finite mind, tell an infinite God, that say, God, you didn't give me enough time. I, you know, you, you can give them 24. I need 36. And God said, you're not you too big, Bohemian. Where, where do you get the audacity to tell me what to do? No, I don't care if you had a, a hundred hours in a day. You still be complaining. Because the problem is, you, you're not a good steward of time. You know, you're not managing your time. Come on, talk to me. When you start, when you seek after God and, and your life is prioritized. You won't be wasting time. Precious time. You know, every minute that you lose, you can't get one back. Every hour that you lose, you can't get it back. Come on, talk back to me. Ain't no sense of playing around. We better shake ourselves and seek out the God with our whole heart. Uh, uh, other words, we want to do what we want to do in the 24, but God is told extra hours to know then I can pray. Then I can study. You going to hell because your heart is not right with God. Listen. When I read of pastors and preachers in the 16 and 1700 that pray three and four hours a day, some six, some eight hours a day. Before they started that day. And here we are complaining. We won't even give God eight minutes. Come on, talk to me. Like prayer is obsolete. No, no, no. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what the word says. Pray without ceasing. You better pray without ceasing. And so you can't come to God to read and I start praying because I don't have enough time. I said pray without ceasing. Because you know you're going to hell because you, you're saying, God, I just don't have enough time to pray. No. Always got time for God. Always have time for God. Cut out some of that, my time. Doing what you want to do. Come on, talk to me. Turn the television off. Because, see, that could be time, quality time with God that could be quality time in the word of God in meditation in prayer but you don't have time because you caught up in looking at this junk and I don't care if you don't have a life we need the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ and God never gave us anything that was not going to be beneficial to us and our walk and our relationship with him you know there's no substitute for church. There's no substitute for church. You know, for folks who say everything, so, oh, we, we had church. No. Forsake not to assemble yourself together. That's when saints come together. So we can bless the Lord in his house. In his sanctuary. Come on, talk to me. I got it. It's come, we come here purposely to worship God. Well, we didn't ha have church by accident. Come on, talk to me. 
And it's time to, 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 you know, all of the shaking and all of the faking. It's time to get back to the word of God. Let me tell you something. And I don't care who don't ever like it. Uh, God, our lives are not governed by bylaws. Our lives are governed by the word of God. He left unto us a little seed. He left unto us the word of God. That man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. I don't want to know what your bylaws said. I want to know what Romans 4 and 3 said. What says the scripture? What does the Bible say? Bylaws and nothing no other kind of law. My God, the worldly law does not uh, trump God's word. It's not superior to what God said. Such description. For in them you think you have a tongue like that. What did he say in St. John 5 39? He told us to search them. Search the scripture. Let's look into it and see why I ain't worried about what no bylaw say. Let's see what the Bible said. Because when God judges us, he's going to judge us by what's written in the book. Not by your bylaw. I'm going to judge according to what's written in the book. He ain't asking you for no bylaws. And that's what's wrong. People take all of this other junk and mess. And instead of looking at what God's word says. Give me, give me Proverbs 3, 15, 16. No, 5 and 6, I'm sorry. Come on quickly. Hold it. Right off the bat, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. I'm not trusting in nothing else. I'm trusting in the Lord. Come on, read. And you got to do it with all your heart. You cannot trust in God half-heartedly. Read. That's what I'm trying to get to. Don't lead to your own understanding. Don't lean to your own understanding. But it's time to look into the perfect law of liberty. Come on. In all thy ways. Acknowledge him. I don't want no, no corner mind individual trying to tell me how to conduct God's business. All of you can go to hell because the Bible is right and everybody else is wrong. When the Bible is being substituted for some other document, we got serious problems. When we neglect or fail to look into the perfect law of liberty. So I want to find out what God has to say about it. I want to make sure because anything in your bylaw that go contrary to the word of God, you need to get rid of the laws. They need to be rewritten so that they are lined up with the holy word of God. Don't care if you don't ever like. Because this is the ultimate authority. Watch this. Can, can I just teach? In Matthew 4 and Luke 4, the Bible tells us that Jesus was driven into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So here come the devil with temptation. Jesus, if you be the son of God, you know, if you be, he knew who he was. You used to reside in the same place that he resided. Where was sin was found in you. And so you had to move around. But now, whenever the devil come up with some stuff, Jesus said, let me look at the bylaw. He said, it's written. Now, we need to go back to what's written. We need to go back to that which is written in the book because you're going to go to hell. My God, filing out the bylaw that does not line up with God's word. And I don't care if you don't ever like it. 
All these folk playing church, they looking for something. My God, not to follow the word of God. No, no, no. There's no excuses. That you, everybody got to live in accordance to every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. God left us a word, a word that transforms our life. Y'all didn't know that? According to St. John 8, 32, he said, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. It's going to change your life. It's impossible to take truth, the word of God, and apply it to your life, and that's going to be a change. No, no, no. Something is wrong. David knew that back in Psalms 119 and 9, 119 and 11. That word have I hid in my heart. For what reason, David? That I may not sin against God. When you get this word on the inside, according to Psalm 37, 31, my God, your feet won't slide. You won't be slipping and tipping. You won't have the so-called sisters, the so-called missionary setting up in the church with highlights and streaks in the hair. You're going to hell. That's the spirit of carnality. Come on. Don't care if you don't ever like it. This is what this word does. This word separates us. Give me St. John 17. And start reading that verse number, number nine. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world. I'm praying for them. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That, that them is the one that God has given him. His disciples. I'm not praying for the world. I'm right now. I'm not praying for the whole monger. I'm not praying for my God for the hypocrite. I'm praying for them that you have given me. Come on. Come on. Now listen. They belong to you, God. Those that are in the world don't that living after the world, practicing worldly practice. They don't belong to God. When you're looking at the sister with white tips, you're going to a burning hell. Because that's after the flesh. The Holy Ghost don't want white tips. The Holy Ghost don't want streaks. The Holy Ghost don't, 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 don't want dye in the hair. They got all these strip, pur purple stripes. And, and, and you, you know, you, you, you have black of the crow with, with red stripes. Red, purple, highlight. You know you're going to hell. Love not the world. Neither the things of the world. For all that's in the world is the lust of the eye. The lust of the flesh. The pride of life. It's not of the Father, but it's of the world. Can I just preach right there? And the wow passes away. And all the desires, the lust that are. But he... That doeth the will of the Father shall abide forever. Our lives are governed by the word of God. That's why he told old Jews in St. John 8.31. If you continue in my words, then are ye my disciples indeed. Now, you, you can't get out of the word, deviate from the word. You can't be adding this junk and mess up on the word and think that you're still a child of God. Matthew 5 and 8 have not changed. Only the pure in heart going to see God. And the only thing that's going to purify our heart is to hide the word in our heart. Because God said, I'm not going to write the words uh, up on tables of stone anymore. But I'm going to fresh the tables of a man's heart. Uh, God, I'm going to do this so it can change him. I'm going to do this so, so they can stop a mess. Read. Come on. We ought to be living a life that's going to be, that God is glorified in. They profess that they know God. 
but in works they are denying him. They sound hallelujah, they sound glory, and they sound praise the Lord. My God, full of sin is a dog he'll flee. But come when you get it like the Bible said, I got Peter, I got when it come down to the rich young ruler, my God, Jesus, he walked away softly because he wasn't ready to give up some stuff. Then Peter looked at him and said, who did it can't be saved? He said, Master, first of all, we done forsaken all to follow thee. And this is what's wrong with the so-called church world today. They don't want to forsake nothing. The Bible has a profound question in my God in, in Romans 6, 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And say, God forbid. And how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer than you? You're supposed to be dead to sin. You're supposed to be dead to the flesh and the desires, the lust of the flesh. You're supposed to be dead to it. You ain't seen a dead woman with highlights in her hair. She ain't going around there putting that junk in her hair. She ain't putting on no, 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 no white tips on. That go for you too. Some of you sitting up in here. If you think you're going to go to hell with white tips, it don't make you look good. You're ugly anyhow. Ain't no white tips on your face. That's why your ugliness at. Now you don't try to try to decorate your finger with a baboon face. And don't care if you don't ever like it. But see, if you get it right, like the Bible said, he'll beautify the meek with salvation. God knows how to beautify you. He don't need all of this, uh, not God, the extra stuff. And see, what's wrong in the church? You got all these folks trying to be devils. But I got news for you, devil. I mean devil. Yeah. 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 They weren't in the same as you. But devil's going to hell, the devil is too. Because you're supposed to be a child of God. Come on, read. Let me get up out of here. I'm no more in the world. Now watch this. Come on. Holy, you mean to tell me God, he asking God to do something that he can't do? He said, Father, you keep them. You keep them through that name. You keep them. And God is able to keep us now unto him that's able to keep us from far. Somebody ought to bless him right there. I got it. I thank God. My God, I heard Peter say, I got we are kept by the power of God. And my God, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Bless him up in here, somebody. And this is why Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. My God, then it meets. My God, I get our word dynamite and my God, it'll blast you out of sin and it'll blast sin out of you. Bless him, somebody. Come on, read. Wait a minute. Make them one. One. Now, this, this, this is a stupidity. Church is going to hell. Because, you know, Jesus had to rebuke James. Master, we saw one casting out devils in your name. And we forbade him because he, he wasn't with us. He wasn't on our label. Don't you, Master, we ought to call fire and I'm help you. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. James, you saved, boy. Cause sound like you don't know what spirit you are. Don't you know that they that's not against us or for us? Ain't worry about it. They had the same label, the same name. You going to hell. Now, look what it said in 1 John 1 and 7. If you. Walk in the light as he's in the light. We have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. It cleanses us from all sin. It cleanses us from all worldliness. Bless him, somebody. Because if you got this body, this, this word in your dad like I, like I got it, I got it ought to be doing something. Because let me tell you something. If I, if, you, if I give some gas and throw it on you and light a match, 
The same thing going to happen to me if you do it to me. Now, you're going to blaze up. Burn up. If you don't hear up, stop, drop, and roll. You better hope that works. But I'm saying, that saying that thou shalt not commit adultery, I don't care what other man that was messing up, if he got in it, he won't commit adultery no more. Come on here. My God, when truth is on the inside, it calls you to conform to the attributes of God. You can't be running after man. Man said this. I don't care what man said. I want to know what the scripture said. Because man is not going to govern my life. My life is governed by the word of God. See, the man that I'm looking for is like Pastor Paul. Follow me as I follow Christ. I need a godly example that I see that they find, see God manifested in their life. I'm not looking at folk that profess it. I'm looking at for somebody that possess my God, godliness. I'm looking for somebody that possess love. Read. Why? I said, I like that. I like that. I like that. This is Jesus now. Jesus said, only one is lost. And that's the son of perdition. Stay with me here. He was saying, I couldn't keep him. He said, I could have saved him too. I could have kept him too. But in order for the scriptures to be fulfilled. Now God, he had to fulfill that part. Come on and talk to me. Because that power, wonder working power in the blood of Jesus Christ. And I thank God for the blood. Bless him somebody. Until we get it just like the Bible said. Until we be found, my God, living in accordance to every word that proceeded out of his mouth. Then listen. How can two walk together except they be agree? We got to agree on holiness. Hey, I'm not worried about all that other stuff. You, you, you know, you, some stuff you, you, you might like. You might you run around there preach. I might, the, the women shouldn't wear red shoes. You, you know. Where in the world is that in the Bible? That's your conviction. That's, then nobody going to go to hell because they, that's your conviction. They go to hell because they transgress the law. When they transgress the word of God. Come on, talk to me. You know, not about no conviction. It's about what the word say. I can't make law uh, something that I, I, I feel like, I, I, you know, I just don't agree with. Okay, show me it's a sin. If it's not sin, I'm going to be nice right there. Let it alone. Come on, Red Roof, I've been, been here another gear. I don't, I don't want to do that. And now, come and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. There's joy in serving God. There's joy in serving God. And I like his joy. I like his joy because you can have joy in tribulation. And I don't care what you're going through. You can still lift your hand to God and say, hallelujah. Anyhow, bless him, somebody. My God, when you got it like the Bible said, my God, even in the midst of the valley, in the midst of your trials and your tests, in the midst of your dog time, my God, you can lift your hand to God and say, hallelujah. Anyhow. Watch this. I'm reminded. Horatio Spafford. Horatio Spafford was preparing to go to England to be in revival with D.L. Moody. But because of the great Chicago fight, he had a business 
And his business burned up, so he had to stay behind and take care of his business. His wife and his daughters went on, was headed to England. But somewhere out in the ocean, the ship caught a fire. The wife and daughters were drowned. So now, it came a time that he took a ship, headed to England. And he told the captain of the ship, said, when you get there, show me where the, the ship went down. Standing on deck, he's looking around and he said, this way it went down. Moment of meditation. But after a while, God blessed him. And he said, he pinned the song right there. It is well with my soul. Oh, my God. The God knows how to bless you in the tough time. He knows how to bless you. Come on and talk to me. It is well with my soul. Oh, glory to God. We need to get it like the Bible said. And stop all of the shaking and the faking. You know, I preach it and I tell anybody, I ain't, pardon my grandma, I ain't nothing nice. Don't have time to fool around. I don't play games. God has blessed me to be a blessing to the body of Christ. But I ain't nothing nice. You don't want to live right. You don't want to be messing with me. You want a shortcut. You don't want to be messing with me. Come on, read just, just a little bit. What did you give them? I didn't give them a false hope. I gave them your word. And when you got this unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ, what happened? The world going to hate you. The world is going to hate you because of truth. When light come on the scene. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. But everyone that do it, do it truth coming to the light. That the deed may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. We're doing it like the Bible said. We're doing it like the Bible said. So we ain't doing it like we want it. It's wrought in God. This is what God expects. This is what God requires of us. And let me tell you something. This is why we got to spend quality time in the word. We got to get the word of God down on the inside. Because the word of God is what going to keep us. The word of God is what going to mold us and make us. Yes, sometimes we're going to be in the valley of despair. But God will bring us out. My God, with more joy than we went in. You can have joy in the valley. You don't just only stop at peace in the valley. But you can have some joy in the valley. Can you see the Hebrew boy walking around in fire with peace? They went down there screaming, thank God, get us out of here. He was already there. He did already made a way. Oh, bless him. And they could lift their hands to God and say, hallelujah, anyhow. If I be for you. Then I'm more than the whole world against you. And this is why we got to stand fast in the liberty where with Christ has set us free and be not again entangled with the yoke of bondage. I got it's time to get into this word and then exegete scripture. Preach expeditiously. I got it exegetically. So let scripture interpret scripture. We don't want to go, let's keep going, getting a uh, scripture here, there, and yonder. And we cannot exegete it. We praise God for truth. I'm just glad that God had left us the word of God. I, I don't have, from the time I got saved, you know, with, it was some women, they were 
Sister Brenda knew him, but I did. After we had gotten married. And they were trying to witness to me, get me saved. Not to talk bad to them. I just told them, like I tell you, when I get saved, I'm going to be saved for real. When I get saved, I'm going to be saved for real. When I got saved, ain't no shaking. Ain't, ain't no faking. I want the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. I want the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. And I thank God for men that standing up and preaching whole counsel. That men that have taken their pulpit and have not relinquished their duties to everybody else but their own responsibility. Come on here. Now, God, you got to feed the flock of God whereby the Holy Ghost that made you overseer. He made all these other folks. It, it ain't made the, the lead missionary. It, it ain't made the lead brother. It, it ain't made the, the, the following brother. It ain't made him the, 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 the feed the flock. That's your job, shepherd. Now, watch this. When it comes down to the church, you, you, you're talking about the leadership of the church. You're talking about the elders, the presbyteros, the aged, the mature men. You're talking about the poor man, the shepherd of the flock, the one that cared for and tended to the sheep. Then you, you got the episcopos, the overseer, the one that watches, watches over and, and guides the sheep. Come on, talk to me. Then all this other stuff doesn't matter. If these things are not being fulfilled in the pulpit, there's a dereliction of duty. <laughs> in other words, you are neglecting to do what God called you to do. And I don't care if you don't ever like it. Come on, Del, sir, let me finish this thing. Wait a minute. The world hate them? Why? Because they're not of the world. They're not looking like the world. They're not acting like the world. They're not running like, after the world. They're not dressing like the world. I, had, I heard the most stupidest thing years ago. Trying to justify women wearing split. You know, I don't see how women could walk in a dress and then have a split in it. Fool, if you get them out that little old geisha dress, Their knees won't be rubbing. Put some room in there. And then, then, then with all your, your, your slips showing, that's nasty, nasty, nasty. They heard me preaching on these splits to preach after we were, you know, in fellowship. He, he said, it's about something to, you know, the sister wear splits. I said, no, they don't wear splits. I said, they buy them. I said, but they sew them up. I, don't want, I said, I don't want to attack because the attacking don't work. I want it sold. I don't want it pent. I want it sold. Because when you, you might, might feel the power and kick in that little, that little tack you got and bust, that little pin and come loose. But if you sew it just right, it ain't going nowhere. So we're going to do it like the Bible said. Holy women adorn themselves in martyr affair. Come on. Holy right. You, because you're supposed to be, holy women are supposed to be daughters of Sarah. Not daughters of Jezebel. Come on, talk to me. And these folks are all, they, they, they sow in the spirit. But the Holy Ghost lead us into all truth. How come it don't lead you to, you know, to, you need to sew that up? You can't walk around there with that like that. I don't care if you don't ever like it. We don't want it too tight. We don't want it too sheer. Why you don't want it loose? Because we don't want to see, I, I don't care if it ain't just a lip bump. We don't want to see that either. Whether a lip bump or a big bump, we want it. Don't care if you don't ever like it. Hallelujah. Oh. Come on.
Come on, El Serge, hair up. We got to get out of here. One more time. Don't take them out of the world. God, just keep them from the evil. And God is able to keep you from evil. He is able to keep you, my God, from running after and chasing after the world. And see, I'm going to say this again before I close. The problem in the poor pit today, you got people that are not qualified to be in the poor pit. They are not qualified to be in the poor pit. Listen, one of the qualifications of the bishop is not how long you've been preaching. You've been preaching 30 years and you're not a bishop yet? If any man has died off of a bishop, he needs to be preaching 30 years at least. That ain't nothing in that. Where did that foolishness come from? You got to read the qualifications. You got to read the qualifications. You got to read the qualifications of an elder. I don't care how long. I don't care how old he is. I don't care if he looks like Rip Van Winkle. Now God, that don't mean he's an elder. He might be elderly. But that don't qualify him to be an elder in the church. I don't care if you don't ever like it. Can I just teach? Paul speaking to Titus and to Timothy, both young men. In fact, I said elder, age or mature. These were mature young men. So, but they, they hadn't been preaching no 20 or 30 years. So that didn't that, that had nothing to do with them being qualified for the office of a bitch. We need to go back to the book and do things like the Bible said. We need to do it like the Bible said. Come on. Come on. See, that's what we need. We need the word of God that's going to sanctify us. We need the word of God. Hear it in our heart that it sanctifies us. It settles the part. Give me Leviticus 11, 44, 45. God is calling us to intimacy with him. You know, this is a, it seems like a catchphrase, but it's true. If you don't fast, you won't last. If you don't pray, you won't stay. And so you won't stay committed in your walk and your relationship with God. Because every time you look up, my God, flesh is rearing its ugly head and flesh has an appetite for sin. It want to go contrary. Then Paul say, it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So you got to bring it subject to the will of God. Read real quick. I am the Lord your God. You shall die for that's something you got to do. You got to sanctify yourself. And you shall be holy because I am holy. Come on. Come on. I brought you out of Egypt because you can't serve me in Egypt. In other words, Egypt represents bondage. You can't serve God still bound in sin. Romans 6, 1 and 2 asks a profound question. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. And how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You're supposed to be dead to it. You should be, so be alive unto righteousness. All right, give me Leviticus 20. And I want you to read verse 25 and 26. There got to be a difference. Come on.
Come on. Ye shall be holy unto me. Because I'm holy. I have severed you from other people. I have separated you from other people. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. And so you're, I, the reason I separated you, so you can be mine. God didn't leave them in bondage. This is the, I got rules that you got to follow. People don't want to sanctify themselves. You know, you got to deny this flesh. If any man come out to me, let him first deny himself. And take up his cross daily and follow after me. You got to deny this flesh. If you're seeking God with your whole heart. If you seek him with your whole heart. He said, you'll find me. You're not going to find him half-heartedly. Half-heartedly. You got to make up your mind. I got to make up my mind. That I'm going to seek after God with all of my heart. With all of my mind, with all of my soul, and all of my strength. For what reason? It'll make you better. It'll make you better. It will make you better. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the word. That has not been watered down. I don't, want, I don't want to know what your pastor said. I don't want to know what the prophet, the apostle, I don't want to know what the bishop, I don't want to know what the evangelist said. I want to know what the scripture said. And if you can't prove it by scripture, let it alone. Let it alone. You can't prove it by the word of God. Let it alone. Let us stand. Every head bow. Father, we love you. We praise and we magnify you in this place. Lord, we glorify you for everything that you've done and all that you're doing for us. Lord, I pray that you would touch each and every one from the least to the greatest. Lord, allow this word that will preach to permeate into our hearts and into our minds. And make each and every one of us better. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I want to serve you with my whole heart. Lord, I don't want anything in me that's not like you. God, I commit my life wholly unto you. Completely, entirely to you, God. And God, as David says, search me, O oh God. Search my heart. Try my reins. And see if there be any wicked way within me. And lead me in the way of life everlasting. Lord, because my desire, wholehearted desire, is just to please you. Lord, help me to please you. Come on and talk to him up in here. Help me to please you, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, just have your way in my life. Mold me and make me after thine own will. In the name of Jesus. Glory to your name. Lord, we bless you and we magnify you. With every head bowed, every eye closed. If there's anyone here tonight and you're not saved, but you want to be saved. In other words, you're saying, I don't want to die and go to a burning hell. I want to spend eternity in the glory of bliss of heaven. God touch our hearts and our minds. In the name of Jesus, if you are unsaved, God loves you. And I do too. God wants to see you saved and I want to see you saved too. I want to see God's will fulfilled in your life. 
I want to see you yielding yourself totally unto him. In the mighty name of Jesus. If there's anyone tonight, maybe there's someone here that you got a need in your life you want me to touch and agree with. Why don't you come? I want to pray for you that God will touch your life. Father, tonight we love you and we praise you and we glorify you. We thank you for your preached word, your taught word in this place. Lord, allow this word to permeate into our hearts and to our minds. Lord, it's never before. In